Hello and welcome to another episode of Doug Formative. Today I'm going to show you how you can create the card suit logos using Inkscape. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do this uh, textured pattern that I created because this video is going to be long enough as it is. Uh, you know, since I'm recording this live, I'm not sure how long, but I would say probably close to a half an hour uh, once I'm done. Uh, but if you want to learn how to create this pattern, leave me a comment down below and I'll do another video specifically for that purpose. But uh, for the sake of trying to keep this video as short as possible, let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, I'm going to drag this off to the side so it's not in my canvas area. If you're on a desktop, you can just click in on the mouse wheel and drag your canvas around wherever you want it to be. But uh, also, if you're on a laptop, some people only work on laptops, there is a way to do that same thing by holding control and the space bar and just move your finger around on the trackpad and it will do the exact same thing. So hopefully that helps. Now the first thing you want to do is come up with a template that you can use with all of your shapes that you're creating. Uh, I like to use a perfect square because it works well for these, uh, but you know if you want to make your rectangles like a little bit taller than it is wide, or you know maybe you want to make them short and fat just to come up with your own style, you can do it that way as well. Uh, I'm just going to use a perfect square by holding control and just clicking down at a 45 degree angle. All right, now I'm gonna need three more copies of that. So I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard to get my selector tool. And with that selected, I'm gonna hold control and hit D one, two, three times. Now I'm gonna hold control, just click and drag this to the right and do the same thing with the other two. And now because I like to keep my uh, stuff organized, I'm going to click and drag over all four. And in my Align and Distribute menu, I'm going to hit the button that uh, says Make Horizontal Gaps Between Objects Equal. Now I don't need these on the screen right now. So I'm going to shrink them down just a little bit. And just drag them down. And then I'm going to drag all this off the screen one more time. Okay, so the first shape that I'm going to do is the heart. Um, and it's because I'm going to be using shapes that will apply to a couple of the other designs. And, uh, you know, it's just easier to start with that one. Plus, it's an easy shape to do, so it's not intimidating and it will, you know, <laughs> hopefully make you want to stick around for the rest of the video to watch the rest of it. So the first thing that we want is another perfect square. So grab your square tool, hold control, click and drag out a perfect square. And you can make this pretty big, that doesn't really matter, you know, just whatever is easier for you to see while you're working. Because uh, we're going to adjust the overall size later on. And now what we can do, uh, uh, we want to make this into a path. So with that selected, we're going to go to path, object to path. And we want to make a circle that's the exact same size, like height and width of this square. So there's two ways you can do that. You can either grab your circles tool, make sure you have snapping turned on click and drag on or click one of these corners and just drag to the opposite corner and that will give you a perfectly shaped circle the same height and width of your square the other way to do that let me hit control Z to get rid of that is grab your circles tool go ahead and click and drag a circle it doesn't have to be perfect you can make an ellipse and that's not gonna really matter uh, what you do is click on your square shape, right click and then hit copy. And that copies the size of that square to the clipboard. Then you can click on your circle you just created, go to edit, paste size, paste size, and that will do the same exact thing. So now we have our perfectly shaped circle. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a different color so we can see what we're doing. And we wanna turn this into a path as well. So let's go path, object to path. And now we wanna align these perfectly Sometimes you can get it to snap perfectly, but you know, sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate. So what you can do is just click and drag over both of these shapes. Come over here, come over to your align and distribute menu and just vertical, uh, center on the vertical and horizontal axis. And now we have these perfectly lined up with one another. So let's go ahead and click and drag over both of these one more time and click anywhere within these two shapes once to get your rotation handles. And now you want to hold control, just uh, grab one of these corner handles, and we're going to rotate it one, two, three steps until the points of the square are at north, south, east, west. Now just click off to the side to deselect everything. Now you just want to select your circle. And with that selected, grab your Edit Paths by Nodes tool, which is right underneath your selector tool here. 
and you should have four nodes like this. Sometimes, for whatever reason, Inkscape will add an additional node here and there. Uh, you know, I'm not sure why. Sometimes it'll, it'll give you eight on a circle. Uh, you can probably even delete them and it's not gonna... Yeah, sometimes it does affect it. So I'm just gonna leave them there and we'll, we'll go ahead and work with this. Don't panic, it's not gonna mess anything up. Uh, but what we can do is click over these top two nodes here and you wanna add a new node between those two by clicking this button that says insert new nodes into selected segments. And then make sure you still have snapping turned on. Uh, click off to the side to deselect and you just want this middle node here. Drag it straight up until it locks on to the uh, corner of the square here. And now you wanna grab this handle and snap that onto the node. Do that with both of them. And what you end up with is this teardrop shape right here. So now what we can do is we can get rid of the square because we're not gonna need it anymore. So let's hit S on the keyboard. And actually, we can use that square to make sure that we have a circle that's gonna be the same size as this later on. So I'm gonna drag that off to the side for now. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna duplicate this teardrop shape that we have here by clicking on it, holding control and hitting D on the keyboard. And this is where you need to make a decision as to, you know, the style and design of your heart because you can either drag this all the way over and have just the edges touching or you can have it overlap a little bit you know it's entirely up to you um, what you want your overall heart to look like I want to have them overlap just a little bit um, but if you want to have the edges touching and you want to make sure that they are perfectly aligned like that you can click and drag over both of these and in your align and distribute menu you notice you have these this is align right edges align left edges what that allows you to do is if you click on that it will make sure that the objects that you've selected are touching perfectly on whatever edge you've chosen so that's one cool feature that you have in your align and distribute menu I'm gonna undo that because I want to have that overlap in there still and now what you want to do is we're gonna create the shape that's finishing off this heart design but I don't want to just create a line and hope that it's a 45 degree angle I want it to be perfect so how we can do that is if you notice in Inkscape you have these rulers on the top and the left hand side if you click anywhere within this ruler area and drag in you get a nice little guideline that you can use to help you keep your design uh, perfect and consistent um, so the left side will give you a vertical line if you click and drag one down from the top it gives you a, a horizontal line but what if you want an angled line well they've built that in as well if you click over here in the uh, corner area and drag down it gives you an angled guideline that's already set it's preset to 45 degrees now if you're working on a design that you want a different angle what you can do is you can actually double click on this guideline and you can change the angle that the guideline is set to. So maybe you wanted a 15 degree angle. You can hit 15 and it will adjust accordingly. And that, that way you can move this around wherever you need it to be and use that angle across your, your design. So I'm gonna undo that with the magical control Z button combination. And I'm gonna click and drag this to this one. But I need another one that's the opposite direction. You can either double click or create a new guideline, double click and then do negative 45 degrees. Or you can just come over here to the top right corner and drag down and it will already have that set for you. So all we need to do is finish off this heart design, which is very easy to do. But first, before I complete this heart, I'm gonna duplicate these two shapes right here. 
hold control and hit D on the keyboard and drag these off to the side and I will explain why I'm doing that later on. So let's go ahead and finish up our heart by grabbing our bezier pen by hitting B on the keyboard and with snapping turned on you want to start here on the guide intersection click and then just click somewhere on this path not over here in the open canvas you know you want it to be part of this you know this uh, straight straight edge right here and just click somewhere down here do the same thing over here click on that edge and then complete this shape by clicking on the starting point here and now what we want to do is we want to unify all of these shapes now so just hit s on the keyboard with this new objects object uh, selected we're going to hold shift click on one of these other objects hold a uh, control shift and hit plus on the keyboard now hold shift click on the last shape control shift and plus and now we have our heart design so now what we can do is duplicate this because I'm gonna need this heart shape for the spade design which makes our job a little bit easier so hold control hit D I'm just gonna click and drag this up now I'm gonna click this heart we just created hit V on the keyboard to do a vertical flip and now what I want to do is I'm gonna show you how these templates will help you out I'm gonna click on this first square here right click and then copy it click on our new heart design click edit paste size paste size and that way this heart is the exact same height and width of this square uh, with that still selected I'm gonna hold shift click on the first square and I'm gonna align them on the vertical and horizontal axis and I'm gonna use this as my little uh, staging area to put all my shapes as I create them keep them nice and organized and off of the canvas while I'm working still so I'm gonna drag that off of the screen again and I'm gonna click and drag over all of these and bring them towards the middle now I actually don't need these guidelines anymore so there's a couple different ways you can get rid of them you can either hover your mouse over it until it uh, turns red and then hit delete on the keyboard um, but if you're ever working on a project that you're gonna need to refer back to some of these guidelines without having to create a new one each time you can just hide them temporarily by holding shift and hitting the backslash button on the keyboard um, mine is it's directly to the left of the delete key uh, but it's the button with the backslash and then above it it has that straight vertical line right above it um, so if you hold shift and click that button it just hides the guideline because if you hold shift and hit that button again it will bring it back but I don't need this right now so I'm just gonna click and just delete that off the screen okay so what we have here is our upside down heart which also is very much the uh, spade logo but it just is missing that uh, stem that comes down off of the bottom of it so in order to create that that is why I, I wanted to have these duplicate um, teardrop shapes and I'll explain why first let's go ahead and turn snapping off because that's gonna get in the way during this process and how I'm gonna create that stem shape is uh, let's select both of these I'm gonna click and drag these up and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get the sizing right for the stem so I'm gonna deselect those uh, let me actually let me make sure that those are aligned on the horizontal axis and I'm gonna click on one hold control and then just click and drag it over to the left drag the other one over to the right a little bit and then you can kind of see like in this negative space you can see the shape of that stem and what I'm gonna do with these two teardrops is cut this shape out of another object so I'm pretty happy with the size that that is creating right there so what I want to do is hold shift make sure that uh, and click on the other one make sure both of these are selected and I'm gonna unify them by holding control shift and hitting plus on the keyboard and now I want to make sure that these are aligned perfectly centered on the upside down heart so with those two still selected I'm gonna hold shift click on the upside down heart and align them on the vertical axis now what I need to do is create an object that I can cut this shape out of so I'm gonna grab a square and I'm just gonna grab a different fill color 
and just click and drag a, a square shape. And keep in mind that you're gonna wanna have the bottom of this square go probably at least to the halfway point, but you know, of uh, these teardrop shapes. And then you're gonna wanna have this centered in here as well. So grab your uh, selector tool, hold shift, click on this heart shape again, center on the vertical axis. Now, also, you want to decide if you want to have the uh, stem shape come over here and then have a uh, vertical edge on each side, or if you just want to have it come to a, a point. If you want it to come to a point, then you can just drag the bottom edge of this square into the teardrop shapes, and this is where the uh, stem is going to end, right there. I kind of like having that little that little edge on either side, so I'm gonna leave it. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to lower this square shape to the bottom. And now I'm gonna select these uh, two teardrop shapes that are uni unified. And I'm gonna hold shift, click on the square that we just created, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hold sh control shift and then hit minus on the keyboard. And that kind of gives us this like hourglass shape right here. And now all we have to do is make this stem part of the spade design. But before we do that, I want to make a copy of that because I can use that same stem for the club shape. So hold control, hit D on the keyboard and just click and drag this off to the side. And now all I need to do is unify this stem with the rest of the design by holding shift, clicking on that hitting control shift and plus on the keyboard. Now we have our spade logo. Let's go ahead and make this blue like we did with the heart. And we're going to click on this second square, right click, copy, select our spade logo, go to edit, paste size, paste size. And now we can align these two. So I'm gonna hold shift, click on the square, align on the vertical and horizontal axis. And now we've got two shapes done. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our club logo. And in order to do that, what we can do, actually what I wanna do, I kinda wanna have that spade there as a reference. So I'm gonna hold control and hit Z until that spade design is its original size because I really want that there as a, a reference. Now we have this square here that I want to use to create two circles that are the size that I need them to be. So I'm going to grab our circles tool, turn snapping back on, click and drag out a perfect circle. And I don't need to create that teardrop shape again. I really just need circles for this one. So I can get rid of the square now by selecting it and just the hitting delete on the keyboard. Now I need to create two more circles, the same shape. So just control D to duplicate them. Now I have those three. And what I wanna do, I want to create a guideline and snap it onto the bottom part of this spade area. I wanna click and drag this so this circle snaps onto that guideline. Same thing with this one. Now with this one selected, I wanna hold shift, click on our spade design, and I wanna align the left edges. So I'm gonna click this button up here that says align left edges. And then I'm gonna do this circle but I'm gonna align the right edges so with that selected hold shift click on the spade design click the button that says align right sides the last step is going to be this uh, final circle so what I can do is with that selected I can hold shift click on the spade shape I want to align the top edge and I want to center on the vertical axis and now that gives us a nice overlap with all of these circles. The last thing is going to be 
to select this stem over here. Hold shift, click on our spade logo and just center that on the vertical axis. And just to be sure, align bottom edges. Now, what we can do is click on the stem, hold shift, click on each of these three circles and just click and drag them off to the side so they're out of the way. And now we can do the process that we did before where we uh, copied the size of this second square here, selected the spade, edit, paste size, paste size, hold shift, click on that second square, align the vertical and horizontal edges. Now, we can just click and drag over all of these shapes here and hold control shift and hit plus on the keyboard to create our club design. Now, one thing I didn't notice is there was a little bit of a gap right there in this design. If you zoom in, you can see it clearly, but that's an easy thing to fix. All you have to do is create another shape to cover over that and unify it with this object. So. We can literally just grab a square, create a square that goes over the top of that. Grab your selector tool, hold shift, click on this design, control shift plus on the keyboard and that fills in that gap. Let's go ahead and turn this blue. Grab our third square, right click and copy. Select our club logo, edit, paste size, paste size. Now we can go ahead and align these two on the vertical and horizontal axis. And the last one, which is the easiest one to do, is the diamond. All we need to do, let's go ahead and uh, grab this square right here, duplicate it by holding control and hitting D on the keyboard. Just click and drag it up here. Click it one more time to, to get our rotation handles. Hold control and rotate it. 90 degrees or 45 degrees I should say and we'll color that blue right click this uh, last square here copy come back to our diamond shape edit paste size paste size and we have our diamond shape now if you notice on the designs that I did you know, these have these uh, stylized curved lines, uh, you know, and that's up to you. Maybe you just like them to be, you know, really simple, very straightforward. Um, but I can show you how to create those curves if you'd like. Uh, so that really only applied to the heart and the diamond logo, but you could also create that dip on the, uh, the spade as well. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how to do that with the... Heart. I'm going to select the heart and duplicate it because I'm going to keep the original one that I did. And what you can do is grab your edit paths by nodes tool and you can literally just come in here to this edge and just drag it in. If you have, if you have an extra node here, chances are you can just get rid of it. So select it and just hit delete on the keyboard. And now you can just make this a nice smooth curved line and just click off to the side to see if you're happy with the way that that looks. Now I noticed after I did that, I kind of have a, uh, looks like a corner right here that I don't want. So I'm gonna delete this node and see what that looks like. And that looks a lot better. This looks more like a smooth curving line. So how do you get that exact same curve onto the opposite side? Well, all you have to do is basically just cut this hard in half and then duplicate the left side of it. So I'll show you how to do that very easily. What you want to do is hit S on the keyboard to get your selector tool. Select this heart and you want to find the width right here. So we can just literally copy the width by triple clicking in here and hitting control C on the keyboard. And now you just want to grab your squares and rectangles tool and just click and drag a rectangle that is taller than the heart and at least the width of half of the heart. And now what you want to do is grab your selector tool again and you want to paste that width that you copied into this rectangle shape. 
and make sure that you don't have this lock selected otherwise it's going to apply that ratio to both the width and the height so let's go ahead and triple click the width hold control and hit V to paste that width that you copied before and just hit enter and that gives you the width of the actual heart we really just need half of that so your, with your cursor still in the width area here uh, use your right arrow to go all the way to the uh, right end of that hit the forward slash button which is your div division functionality and then hit 2 on the keyboard and then hit enter and what that gives you is half of the width of the heart so what we want to do now is we want to place this perfectly over the middle of the heart. The easiest way to do that is to hold shift, click on the heart after that rectangle is still selected and just align the left edges. And just to be sure that you don't end up with anything weird or funky on the, the uh, outside here, you can select this rectangle and just click and drag out. Because the only thing that's important is that this is lined up perfectly in the middle of the heart. And once you've done that, hold shift, click on the heart, and you're gonna go to path and hit intersection. And that gives you just that left, the left side of the heart. Now we're gonna duplicate this by holding control and hitting D on the keyboard. Hit H now on the keyboard to get a horizontal flip. And now you can just hold control, click and drag this over to the side until it snaps onto the other half. Now you can click and drag over both shapes Control shift and plus on the keyboard to make it unified. And that looks pretty good. Actually, I think I'm gonna replace this one here. So I'm going to right click on that square, copy, edit, paste size, paste size, which it should already be the same size. And I'm just gonna plug that back in. And that looks actually really good. I'm very pleased with the way that came out. So the diamond, it's a similar process. Uh, let's go ahead and control D to duplicate that. Click and drag that straight up. Now we're gonna do the similar process, but it's not gonna be as complicated. Uh, first thing, we need to turn this into a path because we never did that before. So with that selector, we're gonna go to path, object to path. And now we're just gonna come in and it doesn't matter which side you start with. Um, just click and drag in as far as you want it to be you know that's an entirely up to you and that looks that looks pretty good right there let me bring it over just a little bit yeah I'm happy with that so grab your selector tool by hitting S on the keyboard select this new shape control D to duplicate it and now you can hit H to do a horizontal flip and now what you want to do is click and click and drag over both of those and you want to go to or hold control and hit uh, the forward slash button on the keyboard and what that does is that will cut whatever overlapping area or whatever was sticking out past that it will cut into that design so that gives us this little shape right here that we can just pull off to the side and delete it now we're going to do that same process again but we're going to hold control and hit D to duplicate that now we're gonna do a vertical flip and this is going to cut these top two rights or top two sides at the same time so we're gonna click and drag over both of these control forward slash one more time and another way you can do this easily is just hold shift and click on the main diamond shape so deselect it and just hit delete on the keyboard and now we have our new diamond shape so we can replace this one and plug it back into our template now you can follow that same process that you did with the heart to do the spade if you want to do that if you want to have that same consistent dip in there but uh, like I said I was trying to keep this video as short as possible uh, I'm not sure how long we've run let's go ahead and check yeah 30 minutes <laughs> I pretty much called that one uh, but that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're liking my videos, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And uh, until next time, you guys take care.
If you're enjoying my videos, don't forget to subscribe right here. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook so you can share it with your friends. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.